All right, so this week, uh, week six, is going to be a little bit of review. Uh, so again, not, not doing the um, activity worksheet, the MCAS, or the diagnostics. So we're probably going to hold off on day four. Uh, so we have the two half days this week. So I'm just going to go through a few examples of uh, how to do each one of these IXLs. Um, and that way, if you get stuck on them, you'll have something you can look back at. Uh, but you can also ask me too while you're doing the IXLs. All right, so the first one, it's focusing on uh, basically multiplying, dividing, adding, and subtracting um, integers. Okay, I don't even think there's any, any decimals in most of those. Uh, does anybody remember that word that we use? Uh, it's like an abbreviation that kind of tells you what order you're supposed to do things in. Uh, it begins with a P. PEMDAS, yeah. So if you remember that, that's what's going to help you with this first one. Uh, so P E M D A S. And what does that P stand for? Parentheses. Yep, parentheses. So if you have any problem with parentheses, um, you would deal with that first. Okay, I don't see any on this one. Uh, how about the next thing? Exponents. So exponents. Okay, if you have exponents in the problem, you deal with that after you do parentheses. And then the M, multiplication, multiplication the D, division. division, the A, addition. addition, and the S, subtraction. subtraction. If you have a problem that has multiplication and division in it, you do it from left to right. So that looks a little weird because you might think it's always multiplication before division. But when you're reading the problem, you just do it from left to right. So like if you had like 3 divided by 6 times 2, you would do 3 divided by 6 first. Even though division comes after the word multiplication, think of multiplication and division, they're kind of at the same time. Right? You just do them in order that you see them in the problem, left to right. So you do the division first, and then when you're done that, you multiply by two. Um, same thing with addition and subtraction. Those are also left to right. So it doesn't necessarily mean that addition is always before subtraction. It just means we do it in order from left to right. So if you have 4 minus 5 plus 6, you would do 4 minus 5 first. So addition and subtraction are kind of at the same time, from left to right. All right, so let's, um, let's try a couple of these and see what we can do. All right, we have 1 times 3 minus 5. Anyone think they could tell me, in that problem, what's the first thing that you would do? The 1 times 3 or the 3 minus 5? Yeah. yeah, you always do multiplication before subtraction. Yeah. So when we do 1 times 3, what does that give me? 3. Gives me 3. And 3 minus 5 would give me? Negative 2. Negative 2. Yeah. That's all you got to do for the first one. Um, let's try this second one in the upper right. 8 plus negative 9 divided by negative 1. Um, who can tell me which operation we do first there? The addition or the division? division. Uh, yeah, we always do division before addition or subtraction. Yep. All right. So we're going to have 8 plus, and now we got to figure out what's negative 9 divided by negative 1. Positive 9. Positive 9. Yep. So negative divided by a negative gives you a positive. And now all we have left is 8 plus 9, which gives us? Yeah, 17. Perfect. All right, let's, uh, let's see. All right, let's go to one that has, I'm going to skip the one that's 4 divided by 1. I'm going to go to the one in the lower right. 8 minus 9 minus 6 divided by 2. <coughs> so this one has four numbers in it. So it's got, it's got an extra step. What do we do first? The first subtraction, the second subtraction, or the division? division? Yep, do the division. So for now, 8 minus 9 is going to stay exactly the same. We're going to have a minus, and now we need to do that part right there. 
What's six divided by two? Three. Three. All right. Now we've got two subtractions. Remember how you do subtraction? You just go in order from left to right. So let's start with the first one. Uh, eight, take away nine. One. Negative, no, negative one. one. Negative one. And we still, what's, what do we still have after that negative one? Minus. We still have the minus three. three. Okay, haven't done anything with that yet. And then negative one minus three is going to give us? Negative, negative what? Four. Yep, negative four. Okay. So we got negative four. Any question on that? So that I think pretty much covers the first one. Okay, guys, check the rest. Uh, so that's basically using PEMDAS. Uh, I'm not going to go through this whole one, but can anyone tell me what you would do first? The addition, the subtraction, or the multiplication? Yep, you do the multiplication. So just to kind of start you off with the first step. What's negative 5 times negative 6? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, what's negative 5 times negative 6? Yeah, Gigi? Positive 30. Yep, you're welcome. Positive 30. Yep. So that would be your first step. You do this part first. And then you have negative 6 plus 3 plus 30. And then we just finish that up. Right. Um, let's look at the second one. Um, so the second one is taking something that they give you in words and trying to translate it into like math symbols, take, taking the words out. How would I write that first one? B minus 10. Yeah, there's, there's not really a lot there. You just change the word minus into the symbol we use in math for minus. That's what they'd be looking for for that one. How about the second one? Multiply 6 by V. How would we write that down? Yeah? V and then parentheses. No, like 6. V and then in parentheses 6. Yeah, so you could you could do that. I think I think they would they would mark that right. Uh, what else could we do? That would have even less symbols in there. 6 times V. Yeah, we could just write 6 times V. Multiply 6 by v. You just write 6 v. Uh, it should mark it correct either way, uh, but sometimes the IXLs can be a little tricky, so I, I would say the simpler you write it, the more likely it's, it's going to mark it right. <coughs> All right, so the next one says to do a couple things. Let's just read what it says. Add t and 6, and then divide S by the result. Right. So division can be a little tricky because we've got to make sure we know the order. Okay. So it says to do something here. So let's start with that. How would we add T and 6 together? What would that look like when you write it down? T plus 6. Okay, so let's start with T plus 6. And then it says to divide S by the result. The, when they say result, they're talking about that. That's the result. Divide S by the result. What if it said to divide S by 2? How would you write down dividing S by 2? Doctor? How would you write down dividing S by 2? So I'm just making one up that's a little simpler because then we're going to do this one. Yeah. Like a fraction. Yeah, so you'd put a fraction. And if it said to divide s by 2, what would go in the top of the fraction? S. Yes. S would go in the top and 2 would go in the bottom. That's how you would write down divide s by 2. That is different than 2 divided by s. So you have to read 
and make sure you pay attention to which one they want in the top and which one they want in the bottom. They said to divide S by something. So that means S is in the top. Right. So how about in our problem? What's going to go in the top of the fraction for our question? Yep, so it says to do something and then divide S by the result. So S goes in the top. And what's the result that goes in the bottom? How about um, down? What do you think? T plus 6. Yeah, T plus 6. That's what they're looking for for that one. It says to add T and 6 and then take the letter S and divide by what you just wrote down, the t plus 6. Uh, let's look at this one. It says raise 9 to the fourth power and then subtract the result from z. All right, so let's start with the first part. And we don't have to simplify any of it. How would you write down that first part? 9 raised, um, hello Isaac, how would you write down that first part that's circled? Raise 9 to the fourth power. What's your base there? You got a 50-50 shot. It's either a 9 or a 4. Which one do you think the base is? I don't know, 4. No, 4 is the power. Okay, so 4th is going to be the power. 9 is going to be the base. Um, so Ellie, how would I write down 9? How do we write down 9 to the 4th power? Nine. Put a 9, yep. Right, and then we use a small 4, right, up higher. So that's how you write 9 to the 4th power. And then it says to subtract that result from z. Okay. So think about what they want. We're doing something with z and 9 to the 4th. Do they want that one? Or do they want that one? It says to raise 9 to the 4th power and subtract that from z. The bottom. The bottom. Right? It says to subtract something from z. If you're going to subtract something from z, it needs to come after it. Like if I said to subtract 2 from something, you would take whatever number you have, and then you would do a minus 2. So when you're subtracting the result from something, that result comes after. Okay. So it's z minus 9 to the fourth. That's what they'd be looking for there. All right. So it's translating something that's in words into uh, an expression. And notice it said do not simplify. So you do not have to do 9 to the fourth power on your um, calculator. Okay, so the next one. Um, this is basically combining like terms, okay? Like doing simplifying and combining like terms. So remember, like terms have to have the same letters, and each letter has to be raised to the same power. So look at the, the first one. What letter do each one of those have in common? J. J. And what's the power on each j there? Even though it's not written, it's understood to be a it's a 1. So they each have a j, and they're each to the first power. If something's not to the first power, you'll write down what power it is. Okay. All right. So when I combine 6j plus 9j, I'm going to get more j's. Um, how many j's would we have when we add those up? How many? 15. Yep. So 9, 6 plus 9 is 15j. And that's what they'll be looking for. 
Now, the second one is going to have some like terms, but there's a property we need to use first because there's parentheses. Does anybody remember the name of the property that you use when you have parentheses? Distributive. Yeah, we've got to do distributive. Can someone else tell me what number is going to be distributed inside those parentheses? Negative 3. Yep. So we're going to take that negative 3 and distribute it out. What's negative 3 times negative 9c? Um, oh, Eli. Times negative 9c? Yeah. Uh, 3 times negative 36C. Uh, that would be 9 times 4 would give you 36. 27. 27. Yep. So positive 27. Well, actually, you know what? I'm not going to put that in the box yet. Positive 27C. And what about when I do negative 3 times negative 1? What's that going to give me? Positive 3. And then I still have plus negative 9C. Are there any like terms that can be combined together? The C's. Yeah, we've got the C's. Positive 27 and a negative 9. What does positive 27C added to a negative 9C give me? Yeah, it's like 27C minus 9C. That's 18C. Uh, anything else that should still go in that box? Yeah, the plus 3. I don't have anything I can combine that with. You can't say like 18 plus 3 is 21, because those, those aren't like terms. Okay. And that's what they'd be looking for for that one. Um, let's try the one in the lower left. Um, what's negative 7 times 9f? 60. Negative 63. Perfect. Negative 63f. What's negative 7 times negative 10? Plus 70. Yeah. Nice. Plus 70. Um, is there anything I can combine that F with? No. No. I need to have another F there, and I don't. So it's negative 63F. And what number would go in the box? 72. 72, yep. Combine the 70 and the 2. Perfect. 72. Okay, now uh, let's look at the last one. The first one has a j to the first power. Is there anything else that has a j to the first power in that problem? No. No. Okay. The second one is a negative 8 without any j at all. Is there anywhere else in that problem that there's a number without a j? No. No. The last one has a j to the second. Is there anywhere else you see a j to the second? No. no. So when it says to simplify that one, there's nothing you can do. You just copy down the same thing. There are no terms there that can be combined together. You could copy the original, or when you're adding a negative number, that really just means subtraction. So other than changing that, there's no like terms to combine. All right. All right, let's look at this one. Uh, so this one's kind of like the last one, except now you're actually solving for 11. Okay. So we're going to start by combining like terms. Anybody tell me what you get when you do 9h minus 8h? You get 1h equals 7. And once I do that, is there anything else I need to do to get h by itself? No, it's done. Right. Where we have h equals 7. So that was pretty much just a one-step a one step problem. All right, let's look at the one in the upper right. Negative 2 equals c. Minus 7, 
divided by negative 1. Whenever you have a problem like that and it's a fraction, the first thing you want to do is make it so you don't have a fraction anymore. Because okay? fractions generally make the problem harder. What number are we dividing by on the right side that's causing that right side to be a fraction? Negative one. We're dividing by negative 1. So to get rid of it, what's the opposite of dividing by negative 1? So we're going to multiply. And what number would we multiply by that would cancel out dividing by negative 1? Well, if you multiply each side by positive 1, nothing would change. Because multiplying by 1 doesn't, doesn't change your answer. Anyone have a, another guess what we're going to multiply each side by? Yeah, negative 1. We're going to multiply each side by negative 1. Um, ben, when I multiply the right side by negative 1, what cancels out? Uh, is it negative 2? No, no, on the right side. Oh, on the right side. Uh, negative 1. The negative 1 cancels out. And can you tell me what would be on the left side now? Just the negative 2. Mm, well, it was a negative 2, but it's not a negative 2 anymore. Oh, the, are you talking about the negative 1 on the left side, like to the left of the negative? Two? Yeah, so yeah, when I write down my new equation, what's going to go in this box? The box below the, the C for the answer? Yeah, right here. I'm not sure. Anyone help them out? Yeah? Negative 1. Mm. What's the calculation we have to do? How'd you get that? Negative times a negative is positive. Negative, negative one times negative two. So that's what's on the left side now. Negative one times negative two is positive two. And that's equal to c minus seven. Um, now this time we don't have c by itself. What would be my last step? To get rid of that negative seven. Add seven on both sides? Yep. Add seven on both sides. What's negative seven plus seven? Zero. Zero. That's gone. And two plus seven? Nine. Nine. So in that case, we get C equals nine. Okay. So that's solving uh, kind of one. Sometimes they go up to two or three step equations. Let's look at one of these. So this one says um, to rewrite the following equation in slope-intercept form. Who remembers what that is? It starts out as y equals. X plus B. What is it? Mx plus B. Yes. So an example of something in slope-intercept form is like y equals 2x minus 5. I just made the 2 and the negative 5 up. Just, that's an example. So, let's look at this one. Um, is the y by itself? That's the key for slope-intercept form. Is the y by itself on the left there? Okay, Ben? No. No, it's not by itself. And we have something else on the right that's not supposed to be there. What symbols are on the right side that we shouldn't have? Fraction. Fractions are okay. There's other, another symbol we shouldn't have. Parentheses. If y equals mx plus b, you are not supposed to have parentheses. So let's fix the parentheses first. To get rid of those parentheses, what property would I use that we, we talked about a few problems ago? Uh, well, PEMDAS is kind of like an order of operations, but this is a, this is a property. Distributive. Distributive, yep. So any, anyone that can tell me what I get when I distribute out that one half on the right side? Mm. Anything? 
All right, well, what's the first thing I have to distribute the 1 half to? The x. The x. What's 1 half times x? 1 half x. 1 half x, yep. And what's the second thing I have to distribute it to? 10. The negative 10. The negative 10. So what's 1 half times negative 10? Negative 5. Negative 5. Okay, so we got rid of the parentheses now. Um, is that y equals mx plus b? No, because y is not by itself. No, the y is not by itself here. We've we got to get rid of that plus 2. So subtract 2. So we're going to do a minus 2. What's plus 2 minus 2? That's gone. So now all we have is y equals, we've got 1 half x. And what's negative 5 minus 2? Minus 2. Negative what? 7. Yeah, perfect. And that's pretty, actually, they're all pretty much the same thing. You always just have to distribute that number there and then bring that number to the other side after you distribute. That's, that's a good example for that one. Okay, I put extra, I mean, we don't, we don't have to do them all, I just I put some extras. Uh, so let's look at the last one. Uh, and so the last one is graphing. So now it's taking something that's in y equals mx plus b and graphing it. Um, actually, let me do it right here. Does anybody remember this, this is the m that I'm pointing to right there? Does anybody remember what that's called? Slope. That's your slope. And the number at the end, the b is the? Y it's called the y-intercept. The y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis. Where does this one say that it crosses the y-axis? Negative 2. Negative 2. So we put a dot right there. That's that number. So I just put a check mark because we used it. Now the slope is also negative 2. Uh, but we need to think of it as a fraction. How would you write that as a fraction? Negative 2 over 1. Negative 2 over 1. And now think of the slope as directions from that point to get to the next point. Negative 2 means to go down 2. Down two. Over one. And which way is over? Uh, positive. Positive, right 1. So down 2 and right 1. And then you just draw your line for that, you know, on edge elastic, or not edge elastic, on high excel, you just click it. And it'll draw your line. Let's try the one that's right below it. What's the y-intercept on y equals 4x minus 9? Negative. negative 9. So you're going to put a dot on the negative 9. And then your slope is what number? And we're going to think of it as being over 1. So from that dot, where do I go to get another point? Up 4. Up 4 and to the right 1. And on edge elastic, that's all you have to do. And then it'll make your line. Let's do the last one, because these are pretty quick. The one in the lower right, what's the y-intercept? Six. So we're going to put a dot on 6. What's my slope? 3 over 1. Yep, think of it as 3 over 1. If they give it to you as a fraction, then you don't need to put it over 1, but it's not a fraction. So that's directions that tell me to go which way? Up 3. Up 3, right 1, put your dot, and make your line. So those, those ones are pretty quick. So that's some sample problems from each IXL for this week. So there's six IXLs. Um, we don't have class tomorrow. So I'm going to kind of leave that up to you, how you want to pace out your, your week. But the six IXLs are all going to be due by Friday.